What's up, everybody? This is Bed Bug Brian. Welcome back. This is episode two. I'm playing Going Medieval. Um, episode one, I showed what we are set for. Uh, it's hard survival and Lone Star. Uh, I managed to kind of get all the important stuff knocked out as far as I got a whole bunch of carcasses that were spread out uh, across the map. We got a structure. I took some time to really plan out where I want things inside of this fort, because fort, that's what it is. It's not a house. It's not a castle. It's not a. It's just going to be a fort for now. Um, but we have our campfire, our butcher block. We have our oak brethren temple or altar and so on and we're just going to finalize by putting the walls up and uh let's see for Bridget. emotionally i have my walls up just kidding um let's see what the merchant has i'm gonna resist the temptation to sell all my free gear carcasses because that's a lot because i know it's going to offer like 60 bucks for deer, Ooh, 10 for the pet, uh, the, I keep saying peasants, uh, 10 each for the two pheasants that I found on the ground, found on the ground, all right, so five, that's huge, and because I spent all that time collecting deer, look at that, one of them is just 51 bucks, come on, son, yeah, so, yeah, I guess we will. Now, I probably would be better off to butcher it, cook the meals, and then sell the meat because I think that would go for, like, 12 bucks each. And I don't know how many meals I'd get out of one deer, but let's just, we're not going to worry about it. Ooh, we've got 80 here. So, let's just sell the other guy. Boom. 56 cents. His way or my way? I guess his way or my way. Um, now I could over offer. We'll see about that, and that way I can get real meatster. <laughs> see if we can get them in our good graces here, but. Um, it's been a year since I played this game, but I remember when they first came out with cartography and the whole bit and with these merchants and stuff, like it would take so much to uh, give to them for free for them to like buy weapons and all this stuff. Like it was really not worth it at the time. I don't know if it's changed since, but, uh, so I don't know about giving up a bunch of stuff for free just yet, but we will get what we need, which is cabbage seed. Uh, how did he get it to where it's just his? Um, let's see, herbs. We got 12 of them, so if I need money, which I kind of do, I can give up five. I don't think I want to do that, though. Sell the dog. The dog that I named after my own dog, my only dog, my only love in this world. Uh, we give up a, man, I'm giving up a lot of animals here. Need, let's do this. Two, three, four, and five. And this way I have, uh, the most important thing is seeds for cabbage. And then from there we can really go on bird saplings. We got that. Um, I don't have the botany for that. I have like a level six botany, so I know not to waste my time on it. I don't know what the level is for flax, but it's also not that expensive. So let's get all six. Um, definitely not going to buy barley. Cabbage seed, we already got taken care of here. Bread, I don't really need. We got that ale. So we need to... Boom, you can keep that 13 cents as a tip. Hey, 13 cents back in 1330 was a lot. I don't know if y'all know that. So what did we lose here? A deer, two, a pheasant. I thought I did two of them. So I still have one in stock. That's good. This is the most important thing. It's going to be a while until I can make ale or any kind of 
beverage or to quench their thirst. So that was critical. And we got cabbage seed, the other super critical thing. Other than that, everything else is just bonus. Uh, time to go back to sleep. We have 112 limestone. It's five limestone per so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 16, 17, 18, 19, let's say 20, that's 100. These things are like 45, so we might, yeah, here that's 88. That'll get us probably enough to get the, the walls and what we see here done. Already with the drinking, Aiden. Good Lord, man, it's 5 o'clock in the morning. If you're thirsty, melt some snow. You know what I mean? Like, all right. So let's look at the schedule here. I give them five hours of sleep. Zero to four is five. And then I start the day off with leisure activities. It'll just top off religion and entertainment. <clears throat> and that way we have a mood boost throughout the day. <clears throat> this guy is like devout because I took the first roll. Uh, whatever the first character generated, uh, offered was Aiden. I didn't do any advanced customization at all. I just took them. Um, so all his pros and cons. But one thing is I don't like overly devout characters because then they have to, they really need a lot of religion. It just takes up time, right? So that's his issue. Oak Brethren over here. So in the middle of the day, I just give them two hours of leisure. And, um, like I said in episode one, it's not like, even if I were to say five hours of leisure in the middle of the day, the second they do backgammon, they do religion, and they're topped off, they'll go right back to work. So it's not like they're going to waste five hours. It's just an opportunity for them to boost their mood. Now, if I were to overdo it with sleep, then yes, you would be wasting a lot of time. So we're going to keep an eye out on that. I scheduled five hours of sleep. And I'm saying that it is enough. Uh, he's not going to get overly exhausted as long as he's able to get to bed by midnight. That's the thing. If something happens and he goes to sleep at 2, I'm going to have to be mindful of that and just do like a temporary adjustment for sleep and everything. But, um, I put all the things that keep him happy up front, you know. So we're a little behind on like structure here as far as like the fort, but not that far behind. I, I'm not concerned at all. All needs are met. We have more than enough food. Now I have all the time in the world to focus on this fort. And any day now I'll see our second settler and we'll be able to put up a fight if need be. No problema. Still got to put that table and stool up, and that's just an extra mood booster there, so mood modifier. Yo, you better not touch my ale, son. 80 points. Or is that his wolf? What's this dude doing? Unnamed, mature. Is this his or domestic? Okay. Or is it says it's... Where does it say domestic? Okay. Got it. Yeah, so I played this game when it first came out and immediately fell in love. I played it hard. I spent like 250 hours on it. And this is like update one and two, maybe three or whatever it was. It wasn't very high. There was no animals. There was all, you know, it was pretty basic. And I could tell right away. I mean, I was obsessed with it, honestly. And I rarely get that obsessed about any game. I've been, I'm an old guy. I've been around forever. I've played all the games, you know. And as you get older and you see it all, you don't get nearly as excited about games. But this one got me. I don't know. It's just the style of the art uh, for the graphics, the, the way it plays. Um, as I said in episode one, I, I have never played RimWorld or anything. And this is like a medieval version of Rim World, right? But I would argue that it's way better. I, I just really like how they're developing this game. So I'm going to 
hopefully get in early. This is early access for it, and uh, I'm just going to work on my content creation. We'll figure out interesting ways to make videos, and uh, I'm just going to put a lot of gameplay in, see if I can offer something interesting other than my amazing personality. Just kidding. So, uh, but I'm excited uh, to... I stopped a year ago when my second computer fried on me. And I think I, I don't really know why I lost two computers in a row, but that really set me back as far as my channel. This is now my third computer. Uh, I have a feeling I do know. Um, I rent an Airbnb, and when the, the place is rented, I go to my family's house out in the mountains. And it's great. They got a really nice house and all that. But the problem is, is it's out in the country and uh, when you live in a rural area like out in the country, you often have problems where the electricity will just go out. It'll go off for like five minutes. Or sometimes it'll just go off for the night, you know, because of uh, just storms and wind or whatever. But it's real brutal on electronics. And I bet you anything. Uh, now, they have a generator that switches on automatically, but it must be doing something to my... Uh, electronics because we've lost two microwaves and I've lost personally two computers um, and uh, I'm really reluctant to bring this new computer over there but I'm about to rent out the Airbnb for nine days so I'm gonna be gone here in the middle of April for two weeks out in the mountains so we'll see if we can uh, keep this computer alive I sure hope it does that would be a real bummer otherwise I'll buy another one I have money I could buy a really nice computer it's just my priorities are elsewhere you know so I was actually really happy with what I did I, I was really down on the fact that I lost my computer but my, I put my time and energy in the Airbnb and other things uh, like guitar and stuff like that I followed my interest and I told myself, I really want to get into building PCs, which I didn't do in this case. But I thought long and hard about it. And what I did is I bought some books. I've been reading a lot. I know my components now. You know, in theory, I know how a lot of things really work. Um, but what I wanted is to have a PC that was fully operational first. That way, if I need to download drivers and put it, uh, you know, or an operating system on a USB. I can do all those things and not have to worry about it. So this is gonna, you know, that's why I only spent 420 bucks on it. That's with tax, you know. So, um, and then from there, I'll get a case and then I'll figure out what size motherboard and get the right, you know, get everything done right. And maybe get like a $2,000 computer system that I build on my own, you know. Um, so that's kind of the game plan. But uh, I'm real happy with myself because I do have the money to buy the $2,000 computer system. But this time, I uh, managed to kind of stay level-headed about it. You know, there's nothing worse. I mean, if you were to not know anything about computers, components, and so on, you could really get nothing for 2000 honestly. I mean, if you just go, hmm, let me go to Amazon spend 2000 I'm sure it's going to be fine, but you could really get some trash components in there. And I, I don't want to do that. I want to, if I get, if I spend 2000 I want it to be a nice system that I built, you know, long story short. So, but the good thing is the minimum requirements for going medieval is 3.3 mega uh, gigahertz. I think uh, it recommends like 16 gigs of memory. I got 32 gigs on this one, this system. Um, and I think a 1030 GTX uh, GPU is the minimum requirement. I got a 1660 with like 8 gigs or something like that, you know. So it doesn't really, this game doesn't really require a lot of hardware is what I'm saying. So if you're on the fence and you kind of have a crappy system, you know, at least have something where you have 3.3 gigahertz or something, you'll be able to run this game with no problems. All right. And then I mentioned this on the first episode, but I'm intentionally trying to run at a 
very slow speed. Now I'm doing a lot, a lot of talking to you, the audience, just catching up with people who know me and uh, kind of introducing myself to those that don't. Um, but the game plan is for me to be slow and methodical and thoughtful, you know. I, if you watch a lot of other people who are running series on Going Medieval, they often play at the fastest speed. It's super sloppy. And alarms are beeping like, people are starving, your pets died, you're, you know, because they're, they're not on top of things. I like to plan ahead, have a game plan. That's the enjoyable part of this game, is the planning and creating and uh, just trying to juggle as many different priorities at the same time and optimizing your efforts and stuff like that. That's what I love about it. So I'll get to focusing now on the game. Um, but I'm happy already with what I did just for this layout, you know. Um, I like the spacing. It's a small enough fort, and I, again, I emphasize it's a fort, not a anything else. But it can be used as a barracks later on, but it's going to provide me and my new settler, whenever that person appears, uh, a great spot to defend. And I'm not going to have to invest any um, material on walls to begin with here. We'll just hold our ground in, a, in this structure. Super excited to get a roof, though, because my guy is just freezing here. And as far as the roof, it's going to be flooring. And then I'll have some Merlins. Later on. Okay. So we are out of stone. Fine. And if that's the case, mining. If you don't have material for construction, mine. If you don't have mining to do, then cut plants. We should cook, actually. So, just switch every second here. Let's do cooking as the number one priority. And take it easy on hauling. But what I like to do is if you don't have the workbench technology or the skills for certain things, then just turn them off. Make it as simplified as possible. If you don't have a crafting table to make blocks, now you can focus on what this person's supposed to do. All right, this. Eventually, when we get more people, I will specialize only to like one or two people doing medical. A lot of people just do every last person one and one for tending and uh, uh, convalescence. But it takes so long for your medical guy to increase in, in skill. You know, you don't want everyone putting bandages on. Um. And I am good on food for a while, so we're not going to worry about hunting for a bit. Construction obviously leads with the two. So this is how it looks. Starts off with the ones. It goes one, tending, convalescence. If you're fine, move on to the next one. Cooking. If not, move on to stewarding. That's like opening windows and refueling. Uh, graziers and then it goes okay done with the ones let's look at the twos we'll do construction if you don't have materials um, then I'll go to mining which will provide materials if you're not gonna mine do cutting wood issues here ah. okay three harvests we're not gonna be there we go it's a pretty well structured 
structure and it gets good. Slowly building this thing, that's fine. We are making a cellar at the same time, so that's nice. The stairs will start here and I'll go down. Then I'll have an extra space as the landing, and then we'll go right. And it'll be the cellar will be smallish, but underneath here. Episode one, I cleared out a lot of trees, but they were all dead or very mature. I don't think I have any more dead trees nearby. Let me uh, scroll up here. But let's see what the next wave is. We need some wood. My, I'm, my mouse is really being a butthole here. Mature. the dead one and this one's almost dead so we get a little extra wood out of it if we get it to it in time mature we'll go with that mature I'm gonna let them dig out that last square over there. That'll get us space to put in a stairway eventually for the uh, cellar. It'll give me a little more limestone, but then we'll come over here and pick this up. And instead of running back and forth like crazy, I like to do this. Okay. Have them pile all these up into like one or two stacks, and then that way it takes full loads instead of just like little, you know, often it'll just pick up, you know, this one and then run all the way back. And then this one. It's like, it's so ineffective. Okay. Especially in this case where it's saying getting resources. You definitely don't want to do that because it'll probably grab for one pillar, which is only like five stone or five pillars. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, yeah, see you just grabbed 24 or even less. That sucks. Bro, this mouse is already like, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go like this and it's gonna fight me a little. So what we're gonna go, here, get rid of the ones, so, so we want to be near the stockpile, say one, all right, it's getting on my nerves, so we're going to physically tell him to get near, he's not letting go of the build order is the problem, what, okay, I'm about to get real mad, okay, Priority one hall, 
So when I tell him... Yo, my mouse! What is going on? I need to get a mouse pad, I guess. And a better mouse. So many things are annoying me at once. Okay. Boom. I don't know how many stone he can carry at once, like maximum weight. I think it's 60, if I'm not mistaken. I just want to tell him to... Alright. So then... I'm so annoyed! 135. Probably 60 stone that we could pick up here. Yo. Sixty. Way better than twenty-three, fourteen, five. I mean that's ridiculous. give us 120 to work with that'll make it more efficient here we'll switch gears back to construction oh my god i can't get my mouse to work i don't know if it's the game or if the bottom of the mouse got dirty and it doesn't seem like it's dirty and it was working just fine when i opened the box for the computer so i'm not sure what's up really annoying. All right, now that we have walls up, this was the plan. these two pillars right here to add stability in the middle, but I guess we'll have to put up another Oh, I know what it is. The, the, the roof here, I have two roof ceilings here and it's not adding stability to the other so I know what to do here. Stability works like this. This one underneath the pillar is maximum stability of four. Then you go one away, it's stability three, two, one, zero. Okay? But then there's this wall. So this is a maximum of four, three, two, one. So now that I got rid of the roof, we should be able to go like this. I'm not going to do the other side yet, so that way I can at least guarantee that uh, over the bed is covered here, hopefully. Oh, he's doing walls.
Oh my god. Jeez. This is hard to do with mouse issues here. There we go. Get rid of that. And prioritize. So that's ten. Each one of these is two. Let's say that's ten there. It's twenty. Forty. Let's say sixty. We need like seventy. It's a good little chunk. There's forty six. Oh, here we go. Midday prayer, backgammon by yourself. Let's make sure Sadie's not starving by accident. Yo, this dude's coming in to eat my food. I'm gonna let you do it this one time. So let's see, 18, he's eating the steaks here. Eh, cost me one. He'll be back. I'll be able to kill him. I don't want to risk getting injured now. Oh, now we got the little pole cat too. Who else wants food? He's got those two little wall pieces and we'll fix that problem. Another one. I'm sure to tame it, I don't have that skill. Show where the necessary skill, no seller with necessary animal handling skill is available. How do you figure that one out? Well, at least it's full, somewhat. See why he has to run out the outside. Nothing blocking him on the inside. Oh, well, maybe. Never mind. Pretty sure these guys are good. Yeah, they're not decomposing or anything. Okay, we are enclosed with walls. Said weird. get this up. I'm just going to go ahead and cover. We got 96 limestone, so we are good to go. Just go like this. And then you'll see kind of what I had planned. So obviously there's a hole here with the stairs. So what we want is you come up the stairs. I'm going to leave a space for in front of the stairway 
Then we have a door, which I have no wood. Then, um, I was going to put walls with a little bit of space so I could store, like, uh, weapons and so on, but I think I have a better idea. So what we're going to do instead is just enclose this. Oh, see, I'm telling you, we are ahead of schedule. Slam the door shut on this fool. I'm kidding. Melee, 22. Pretty good. Uh, who knows about the marksmanship. But right now, I don't think I have anybody that can really shoot a archer or uh, a bow. So, obviously, we're going to help him. 100%. I hate that I just said that. Let's go back here. It was looking like I didn't know what I was doing for the first five days. But now we have everything. We have beds. We're going to be warm eventually, soon. And then we're going to be fortified. I'm also going to clear out trees here so that way we can have a good long line of sight for bows. We are good to go. I have a a two-door entry system here so they can't just break down one little wimpy door. They have to go through two. Hi. My nose is running. Okay. So what we're going to do here is on this side, we're going to have a stairway because I'm not going to be able to... I learned today by a guy's uh, YouTube account called Just Don't Die. He's uh, clearly a very smart guy who's very familiar with this game. But uh, he was saying that there's no attack uh, modification for, like, you don't have to go five stories high for your archer to get a, you know, a major bonus. In fact, all that would do if you go too high up is you're taking away your range for the bow. So it's better just to be one level higher than your enemy and you'll have like a plus 50% or whatever whatever the modifi modifier is. Um, so we're gonna utilize that. We're gonna be one level up from our enemy unless they're over here, which is, you know, I don't care about that. I'm not too scared. So we'll get that modifier. And then up on the roof is something I didn't do previously. Is to have some objects that help if your if your archers take a beating being up here. Now I'm, I'll have merlons, and those will um, provide uh, extra defense for your for your people up on the roof, right? It'll um, but there are gonna be times where you take one or two too many hits, but you want to keep your archer up there munching on enemies. And so that's what these things are going to be for in the corners. Say there's archers over here for whatever reason. Your archer's shooting at them, and they get the best of your archer, right? Normally, in that case, I would then go, oh no, let me hide that guy. Bring him downstairs. He's in trouble. But now that I have these up, or when I do, I can go manually move the, my archer. Now he's 100% safe from the archers in that corner and then have him facing over here or wherever for enemies and stuff. Um, normally what I would have done is only had Merlons on the edges of the building, you know, which is great. They're perfect. That's what they're for. But there's time where you need 100% safety. Um, so that's going to be my modifier there excited to use that and since we have these up for that reason I'm also going to put um, uh, like wicker roofs over like here and here and here and here and underneath that I'm going to have armor melee weapons bows apparel you know so it's going to be storage and that's going to be ideal because it this is going to be like the last line of defense. In order for an enemy to, to get to you up here, they would have to go through the first door, which they will. Go save. Then they'll get through the second door, which is 
you know, hopefully we're winning the battle by that point. And then they have to go up the stairway and they have to go through a third door here. By that point, we'll be ready to go, you know. So overall, that's why I'm calling this a, uh, a fort. It, it's, it's not a fortress. It's not a castle. It's not a home. It's a fort, basically. It's our frontier's best defense against the first couple of waves um, as we build up in, uh, in our population. But later, we'll have walls and things that make sense, and then uh, eventually a big castle and the whole bit, you know. But this right here is very reasonable. There's not an ounce of cheese tactics. You'll never see me do cheese tactics. It's something I really hate. I don't save games unless if I'm at the end of the session and I, you logically want to save it so you can come back. But I'm not like, oh, no, a battle. Let's save. And then, you know, that's some, nah, that's not my style whatsoever. Um, but I'm also not going to build, like, trenches that utilize exploit basically how the game works so the enemy can't cross it and stuff like I'm not doing that you know like I want it to be thoughtful and ideally I would love to have a perfect mixture of melee and archery and so on but when you play survival and hard mode you will have seven people and the, the computer is going to eventually send like 25 or 30 so it's you have to it's archer heavy for sure, you know, like, you know, so you just got to use the best tactics possible, but I, I'm not going to use any kind of cheesy exploits at all. So all that said, I think this is pretty reasonable. And uh, what you got here is the first door or Merlon. I just need some more wood and I'll put a couple of more Merlons there. And then the main, really the main entrance door where Sadie just went through. And on the side is a window. So that way with somebody with a two-handed weapon can attack the enemy from the side and not just be hiding in the building trying to, you know, not get killed. Boy, are we out. Well, they're getting along fine. That's great. So let's look at uh, new guy's stuff. For now, since there's only two people here, um, neither one has a weapon anymore. Is that true? Wow, no weapons. Okay. Uh, what is your skill? Marksman 4 versus a marksman of 15. So Aiden's going to have the bow. That is arranged. And you shall have a two handed never flee. Never, ever, ever flee. Uh, with a two-hander, there's not going to be uh, shields. Headgear, we don't have, although I don't have any armor, but for now, I'm just going to leave it on cap. And when we're not in battle, uh, I'm not going to be wearing... Oh, wow, I wasn't wearing that cap the whole time. Unbelievable. I don't have any armor, and we won't damage food all... We're good there. What do we got? One day and four hours. We are so good right now. But what we need, since this guy is double passionate and seems to have a oh, 15 mining, we're going to have him be our miner. We need that material to get the roof done. But if we're attacked right now, we're good to go. We don't need all that built. I'm going to put um, a wooden stairway down here. Not the highest priority right now. Although, if I do build it, I can keep mining. Oh, bastards. Now, if you use a wooden stair, you can see underneath it, it's just a frame, so it's empty. You can put the stairs down. I see a lot of people remembering the very beginning of the game where if there's anything falling on the ground, you can't put the stairs down. But if I were to switch it to the stone stairs, I believe it'll be blocked because of those bones, right? So if you didn't know that, there's your rare tip from me. 
Oh, it works there too. Um, let's use wood because I'm really out of both. But somebody's chopping right now. Boom. Now, so we have a landing here. Take a hard right and we'll dig here. We're gonna need to put flooring. One, two, three. Uh, 65 sticks, we have plenty for wicker floors. To another stairway and then once we're at that level there will be a door and then a square or so for the cellar but this is really so we can have materials to finish the building so it's a win-win everything's going in the right direction here plus Hengus he likes to mine he's double passionate about it for some reason so he will definitely be our miner, and while we're at it, skill 11 versus 15, but we're not taming anything. We're not harvesting at the moment. Not growing. Construction will wait on. This guy doesn't have a bow. I'm not worried about his passion for it. We got more than enough meat. This guy's not my botany guy. Cooking is settled, even though he has a higher skill. This guy's passionate, at least. We don't have a crafting table. We don't have a smithing. We don't have this, that. We just need to get through this battle, and then we're going to switch gears and catch up on time lost as far as, like, research. I'll just have two tables, and then eventually three tables. We'll have a research team. So his main focus... Number one is mining, and then he switches stewardship if there's anything, and then he says I'll haul, which works for me, and then thirdly, let's do the opposite. We'll say second and third. That's good. This dude, no need to even say one. Construction is a two, mining. We will say this is your number one priority. Is it though? We have one food, yes, we should do that. They're equally construction, but this dude's gonna mine all day before constructing, so. But we need the material. We got 23 hours. I'm feeling very confident here. Boom. One step closer to our cellar. Oh. Way close. Um, Aiden getting resources. Sweet. Once you're there, can you just... Prioritize, get it out of the way. And can you just get this? Okay, so we have space here. Then one, two, three for the stairs. So we're gonna leave this hole this one we need to be careful so we need to make sure he starts there I guess those bones will be underneath the stairway forever something tragic happened underneath the stairs sweet okay it's 
it's nice to have two people. I can feel a difference already. We're making just running out of the limestone and having to collect it and all that crap. It's really uh, starting to wear us down. But all the defenses are built. We're just wrapping up with some ceiling. Actually, it'll be fine. And no one's dehydrated. We have herbs to heal us when we're down. No food, though. That's probably not wise. Let's see if we can get this little butthole. I think they bumped up the food requirements when it comes to um, hunting. It used to be 12, and now it's 24. And, uh, I mean, that's... Big change. Pretty certain it was 12 before. Nope. He's like, oh no, he's on to me. Doesn't look like these are gonna be a lot of meat either. Good uh, hunting practice here. One shot, one kill? Nothing. Well, the one great thing about wolves is sometimes they just don't run away. So let's take our chances. If he comes at me, what? Getting just gave up. He's scared. I'm trying to get food now, so that way if we're injured, we can heal up and not starve. Excellent. And that's what you get for taking our food that other time. I don't know if it was you or your friend, but I'm going to kill your friend too. Here. They're loving it. He's like, good job on the polecat. Okay. Uh, Hingus should have a... Oh, wait. The hunting guy is the one that does the cooking. Is that right? Yeah. Get him. Come on, dude. Ooh! One shot, one kill. No scope. Way off. That was way... All right, let's take a chance here. I know I can't kill him in one shot, though, so let's just... He just does not want to do it. We need a hero, though. Oh, he's barely running away. He's just not threatened by my archery. It's like I'm just going to casually walk away, take a couple of shots. They're somewhat irritating. Let's look at this. Hit him again, or you're going to be uh, in a fist fight with a wounded wolf, and you are. All right. I don't want you to get too hurt. So what we're going to do is we're going to say manually attack with your two-ended sword. This dude, we're going to take over. Let's run over here. Got a little bit of a lead. Can you get it off before he gets hurt? He misses. Can he take off and not take a hit? I'm hoping he's a little preoccupied. Nice. Teamwork. Excellent. Uh, four. Your number one priority is... Cooking, go cook. You, good job. R, go ahead and call that. See, that's thinking ahead right there. That's the advantage of playing slow and thinking about what's going to happen if the battle doesn't go that great and you're wounded and then you also don't have food. Although I did forget <laughs> I have way more food. Okay, why is he hunting? Eight and four. That's two. This is a one. I feel like the game still has a tendency of not letting go. Like, if it's in the queue of things to do, like hunting or whatever, it just won't let it go if you change the priority to one. 
and that's annoying. So in that case, I told it to, what's he doing? Getting resources. He's hauling? What's he doing? For what? What is that for? I wish I could see what the resources is for. Sticks. What's happening? What are you getting resources for? Alright, man. So we need 24. Oh my god. I felt like I should have read that. Well, that's a waste of time. I was trying to say prioritize construction. Oh. Not start, need to clear. Okay. Alright. I'm annoyed. And I'm annoyed with myself. Clear this. Get this. There. Aiden is hunting. Is there something wrong with these guys that he's not registering? I know the butchering table is now gone, but construct. But before, and see, he's still trying to. A waste of time just before an attack I was like way ahead of the game here I mean I'm not behind but needlessly I mean I could have all this gun up here there are more Merlons here which we should do we have 30 I like to call them Merlins like the wizard never even heard of the word until this game, so who knows how to pronounce it. Do I have enough? These are only 10. That's 20. I should have it to where it's, you know, on the side over here, but whatever. I'm not worried about the first raid. Sadie's checking out the roof. I think we got the approval from the dog. These guys are like, nice sleeping next to you, man. Thumbs up. Hingus just starting immediately to work. Oh, that does. It's actually, that's another thing. Oop. Trying to be prepared, make sure that your people are fed before the fight. Let's see, seven hours from now, it's uh, gonna be 12. Just wanna make sure that um, they're fed. They go pray, entertain themselves so they're in the best mood possible. They do the battle and 
they're not rebelling afterwards or in the middle of battle or something crazy like that, you know? This is like the big game. The night before the big game. Six hours before. Angus getting it in. Let's just check and see here. Major mood boost. He's got the initial 25. Together we're strong. Bonus. Everything's going the right way. The pride of religious. Ooh. Well, it's a good thing I paid attention to that. Okay. This dude is a restitutionist. Okay. Just confirm. Imagine that's the case. Or he d just didn't have leisure. So let's see. I thought they were both brethren, but... Two okies. Okie dokies. He is restitutionist. Okay. Easily fixable. I don't have wood and I don't have stone, so I guess we'll dig for the cellar. We'll make that stone. No, we shouldn't. Let's get this. happen there you know what I mean nowhere near enough let's see if he's slacking maximum load pretty good I don't believe he's gonna grab more than whatever that is oh even less how much did he try to get away with see that what I'm talking about this guy walks all the way over there and tries to get one limestone pile that's honestly very annoying, and it's been that way since day one since I played the game. And like, it's not like they want you to micromanage that hard. They just never fix the AI. I mean, that's nonsense. This dude with this five stone refuses to... Yeah. That's annoying that it's still, this game works like that still. This is this was what was annoying in the past. I don't want an AI to do everything for me. I enjoy micromanaging to a, lot of, a large extent because that's kind of like the skill gap. If there's so many things going on, like StarCraft and so on, you have to stay on top of it, then that, you know, one person's gonna be better that than someone else. That's fine, but when it's just not, running right and you know it it makes you more annoyed at the game than anything and in that case when a character goes over here and there's 60 pile you know 60 stone and they only picks up one that's that's just really annoying excellent right. i'm only really building the stairs so i can put a flat stone roof on top and then that way we are fully insulated down below and this will this will uh, work once we have stuff closer to it so we're good to go we got two hours if we need more stone there it is 47 Having mouse issues again, so I'm gonna shop for a mouse and mouse pad. Hopefully, it's not 
issues with my $421 system, just like stuttering or something. Other than the mouse problem, everything seems to be running fine. I set the graphics to maximum everything, so no problems on this end for me. That's kind of the beauty of the graphic design, the artistry of how they've set things up. I mean, it's not like you need glimmer on the bricks or whatever. Like, this is cool. It looks cool to me, you know? And it doesn't require, it's kind of like the equivalent of Valorant. Valorant is built in such a way where it looks cool, it has its own art style, but it also, you can get, like almost every system can get 200 frames per second, it seems, because it's just not overloaded with, you know, too much graphical detail. some point I just want to get rid of these two not right now battle is in imminent okay refuse to bow to assailants that's that one I'm just curious and back in the day it would not always be accurate if it said one archer and three marauders sometimes it would be very different whoa hold on Avalon is friendly, friendly. I didn't read it all, but you stood your ground, refusing to give in to their demands. Okay. I was almost disappointed because sometimes it would cancel a battle and just say, it, it just like the AI didn't want to do the attack or something. And I was almost disappointed because I want that battle. Okay, perfect. See how I set the leisure just before... Uh, battle time. These guys are praying. They're going to get the maximum morale they can for what we have. So I got their religious religion fulfilled, entertainment, expectation. Not sure what that is, even is. We all need a little. Huh. Delicious dream. Anyways, so. Their morale is not going to be overly low, and uh, if things don't go well, sometimes that can be enough to where all chaos breaks, especially when the battles get big, you know, the chaos afterwards, where all the dead bodies are making people upset, and you have your guys already on the verge of freaking out, you know, you don't want that. You want them rested, you want them high morale. Okay, so... They're indoors at the moment. Staying warm. I do wish I had this finished, but I have some cover in the front. So great, I can't wait to uh, use this. If things go bad for the archer, you know, I can tell him to come over here or maybe he can shoot at something. In this case, it's kind of fixed. Everybody's gonna be coming in from this angle, but you get the point. We have cover up here if it needs it, aside from the Merlins. So let's do this, get him up there in position. And I'm gonna let Hingus get his prayer on. And that's what floats his boat. Okay, now I wanted to clear these trees out. As you can see, I got this radius. Um, I just didn't get a chance to get to it. It's not a huge deal. But it's going to cost me a shot or two for sure. This guy's going to use that tree to get closer. And then I'm, you know, but oh well. Attack. Attack. All right, Hingus, you need to finish up with your prayers here. Let's slow him down and go to the next one. Boom. That's their archer. Do a little more work on the archer. We're going to get Hingus to uh, actually, they're going to be working on that. For, I don't want to push it. See, I want to get Hingus in this position here so he can take the two-handed spear and poke at Duncan once he gets through the door. So the Merlon just blocked that first shot from our enemy. He's going to, Aiden's going to continue to do work on Gregor. And that way he doesn't have to worry. Blocked again. 
this guy is going through the door fast. He did two swings. And it's starting to crack. Are you done? Okay, he's done. So he's got his uh, dealio. Is that a sword, dude? What do you have in your hand? Hold up. Okay, it is a spear. I need it to be a two-handed long weapon here. So he's going to be over here. And uh, we're going to use that window once Duncan gets through. And then um, Aiden can go over here and shoot through this Merlin. That's what it's for, to go over like a door and stuff. Boom. I'm going to let Duncan just be preoccupied. And we'll get others that are further away. Just kind of soften them up a little. Okay. Soften this guy up. Pretty good. Let's work on Duncan now. Because I'm going to rely on Hingus to do some work here. Hopefully he doesn't get too messed up. Nope. Come on, bro. All right, Aiden. Focus on him. All right. I know this works. I'm pretty sure it works. You need to come over here and attack here door not or the window not open of course this guy also all right that's fine enough we're gonna go to this door anyways because we have a choke point perfect hold your ground but we'll figure out why that window didn't work i know that that's something that's supposed to we're gonna work on duncan because I want both of these guys dead in the end. Once one of these guys drops, it'll be an automatic victory. Okay? But we want Duncan. We got the victory. Hingus is getting great melee experience here. Nobody's dying. This dude didn't even... Perfect. And now I have all their equipment. That's the number one thing, is um, we get their equipment, and even when it's garbage equipment, I fully intend on breaking all these items down, whether it's uh, wooden weaponry or armory stuff and smelting them and uh, apparel, because all those things increase your experience for like tailoring armory etc etc when you break things down so it's kind of twofold you are threefold you get rid of all this junk you get some materials back and you gain a lot of experience all at, all at once and you're going to see these horde these fights are going to get massive too so it's a lot of material Boom. In come the wild animals. Gonna munch on some bodies. I'm not hating it. Feel free. I've done games where um, if you get the right personality trait, like callus or whatever it is, uh, you can really do it for anybody, but you can basically butcher the uh, dead bodies and get leather out of it, so that way you have a lot of material to practice your... Um, tailoring and stuff I would absolutely do that in the past but now you it actually breaks down I don't know if this door is in the right spot is it I can't tell but now it, it shows like hair hide and uh, cow leather and all that stuff so uh, it would show that it was like human leather if I made some armor out of human leather you know nobody wants to buy that or probably wear it so before, you used to not know that. It was leather was leather, and you could just make all kinds. And so my um, tailors would have just an endless amount of leather because all these dead bodies, I would skin them. 
and uh, get the armory skill way up, you know. The problem with that is, of course, psychologically, it's very harmful to the players, and they rebel and all this crap, you know. So we'll see. If, if not in this gameplay, uh, another one I will. Because I'm not kidding. There are times where there were attacks of, like, there would be 50 enemies. And so what I would do is just have this, like, massive shed near the front of the castle and just have like six butchering tables and have you know all this stuff to process dead bodies and and you know uh, break down all their apparel and so on it was very systematic it was kind of creepy but effective Okay, so for sure, um, did I ever make a waste spell? I'm sure I did, but this is just to show me that I have soil right here. What it will do is we'll just get a little body pile here. And, uh, and waste. I don't like that it's right there, but for now it's going to do. We'll say waste say carcass carcass and I just cremate uh, enemies as well as settlers because the past is the past you know and there's only so much real estate so <laughs> I don't want to have like 60 graves out in the you know grave sites Let's uh, get the priority of hauling. We're kind of already done. I just want to get it done, though. And uh, we'll worry about the rest. We're doing great. We killed the enemy pretty easily. We have all their stuff now. That's great. Um, oh, I need to... I don't want my... I need... We got 57. Dang it, I need materials, is what I need. Let's make a limestone roof set up here. Boom. Like this. And follow through with the plan. Alright, so now we're going to have coverage. So again, we'll have armor, weapons, everything that you're going to need up here. So. It's got, this will be an excellent collecting point, you know, like, boom, you got a surprise attack, everyone run to the rooftop, then start grabbing weapons and all that, and, you know. Uh, also, you know, you may have 12 archers up here. Everyone grabs a bow, and they're shooting enemies, and once the enemy gets through the first door, you already have your supply of swords and spears and stuff up here. You could switch to melee no problems it's a very smart way to to go about battle here so we're going to need limestone to do those two things um i hate i hate having apparel and armor and stuff like that on the ground because every second it's deteriorating becoming less effective less valuable but what are you gonna do apparel on this side adapt it as we need but apparel here and then oops we'll just say armor or uh, warfare and I'll have armor and uh, warfare boy do I have to sneeze right now let's see what warfare is armor shields and weapons perfect that covers everything get to it Meanwhile, these guys are, watch him go pick up a pile of bones or something. What's he doing? What did I tell you? Jesus Christ. Okay, enough of the hauling. Let's get to, uh, I need you to construct two there. You are going to focus there. What we can do, since we don't have any food, shoot. We'll say hunt. And two, cook. 
three construction, four mine cutting plants. Really? Nobody? This guy is mostly gonna mine. Looks like they're tied. Six versus ten. This guy already has more jobs, so we'll take cutting plants off of him. We'll say something like that. In fact, we'll say five on construction. So mine first, get the materials, go to construct, and then cut plants for more materials, and then haul, something like that. But this dude's going to hunt, then cook, then haul. I've never attacked a boar before. And I know that boars can be ferocious in real life. What's going to happen to this dude? Is he going to die? Okay. 1900. He's got some time. Two hours before leisure time, so... Can he get that boar killed? And I just need to make sure he picks it up. He probably won't. This dude's clearing up. Fifty-eight out of 103 hit points, making it basically half the effectiveness of the weapon. Not even damaged. Dude, you can't hit this guy, not even once. We need the food. Oh, shit. Okay, not attacking, so that's good. This guy. Oh shit, 16 points, can he get out of there? Okay, we're gonna take manual control here. I don't wanna die out on the field. Okay. He's gonna get his swing in. No. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna take a hit. Okay, run, he ran, okay, good. He's just gonna run clear across the map now. You son of a gun. We need the food. I came out here and I'm not going back without it. Maybe I am, but. Hit him! Hit him, okay. One more shot, not even close. Halfway there. He'll miss. All right, here we go. He gave up. He didn't want that smoke. He went to bed. That's how unthreatened he is. I 
wouldn't be pausing so much if it wasn't for the fact that my mouse is really giving me a hard time. It's just all over. Okay, now his movement is severely compromised. We're missing left and right. We're just going to squander this moment. Come on, Aiden. Do it not just for yourself, but do it for your teammate, too. Stop missing for crying out loud. That's crazy. The boar died of old age. Ooh, I'm seriously injured. That's what. What's up? <laughs> Oops. Oh, he is. Never mind. He or she. Okay. Hell yeah. Just to confirm, you're not messed up, are you? Okay. Poor boar. No empty spot, huh? Are you telling me I have like 16 carcasses? No. Okay. But yes, I keep forgetting. Or something's going on with these carcasses. It's like... All I'm saying is I have number one priority on cooking. Nobody's uh, butchering or doing anything. I'm very confused. Let's just expand this. And we'll figure it out in the morning. Go up here. That call it boom. Bro, do not ignore orders. Okay, I'm gonna help this guy out. Is it midnight? I'm gonna do a little adjustment on his schedule here temporarily. We'll go get me sleep and leisure for doing such a good job. And then since you're actually good at cooking, we'll do that. So when he wakes up, he's going to get on it. Oh, maybe it's, oh yeah, that's right. I demolished this thing forgot about it, built a new one, and that's why. Okay. Got it. I'm a little rusty here, folks. Okay. We got the first hole there. We need to put this in. So this is number two. We'll do one at a time, and then we'll put in the stairway, and we'll be low enough to get the maximum benefit of being subterranean. Cool, but we did get the uh, rooftop built, so what apparel and nine points left. 61 summer clothes, decent, sturdy. Uh, winter clothes, we do need to save forever on this. And one way to recognize if something has no orders, see that little circle there, the black circle? Uh, that says it has some kind of order, you know, instructions. So it may be waiting for um, a user to use it, or it may be at its limit. But if it had no circle there, then it, it means it's, you know, there was no orders given to it at all. So I should have noticed that for the uh, butchering table. Hear the sound? That's the sound of the alarm. I don't even know. N next time, I'm going to actually time it out. I think I'm just going to do like hour and 30 long, ep 30, uh, hour and 30 minute long episodes. Let me turn that off now. Um, for this practice, this is just a practice series. Um, I'm not even going to make thumbnails for them. I'm just going to put them out and just kind of watch them for myself. See if I'm being overly boring or rambly or, or whatever. And then I'll get to it and uh, like actually make some decent looking thumbnails and, and try to really make a series out of it. But for now, we'll do hour and a half long series. My time is up. Hopefully we did at least that amount of time and uh, I will see you next time. Uh, please be sure to like and subscribe. You know the drill.